I'm sorry, what? You got arrested on shift. Like th this communication has gone backwards as a policy instead of being more effective. Like we, if there's a problem with firefighters joining their channel and, and jamming up their frequency, then how about we have a better coordinated training between all of the departments instead of isolating departments? That is my big issue. And now this is what's happened as a result of it. And it's unfair, it's unjust, and it's unsafe. No, I was going to ask you if you found the bathroom okay, but I forgot you used to live here. God damn it. Just sit up. Yeah, it's all good. I'll just sit here. Yeah, sorry, I had to use the restroom really badly. That is not what I wanted. <laughs> I, 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 I swear I'm civilized. I like using the You want to miss the chair there. So how have you, uh, how have you been doing? Uh... Recovering okay. I'm finally out of the damn wheelchair, so that's nice. Yeah, I saw that. Is that yours or like a borrowed one? A uh, borrowed one uh, from uh, the hospital, so I gotta bring that back at some point. But yeah, I'm walking around on my own two feet now, and um, the only reason I was in it was because I had this equilibrium problem. I couldn't, like, I could walk, but I was having balance issues, so... It was like, they're like, you should not drive and also sit in a wheelchair if you're going to get around, so. Yeah. So what? I wasn't really told much of what happened. What actually happened? Um, so, uh, Bailey and I were getting fuel up at the um, uh, Flywheels gas station up in Sandy. And um, the pumps weren't working for some reason. I couldn't, I couldn't get it to pump gas. And, um... Bailey, I guess, circled around the ambulance, and I was trying to get it to work. And I could have swore I smelled gas, but I figured, like, oh, maybe that's, you know, that's just how it is at a gas station. You know, you smell odor of gas every now and then. Yeah. Um, and I think, if memory serves, I, like, knocked over um, this little, like, metal thing that was holding a, like a, like a advertisement and it fell over and I guess maybe that caused like a spark and it must have been gas leaking and it just caused the whole thing to go up. I'm gonna probably contact him soon and see what's going on there. Get that resolved. Uh, you, I guess you'll have to resolve any issues that the new intern chief or whatever the person is uh, whatever issues they've caused. Yeah, Deputy Chief Baldwin. <laughs> Baldwin is the name? Baldwin, yeah. I forget her first name now. I'd I, I, I have to look at the paperwork. Wait, do you... Isn't Baldwin our commissioner's last name? Yeah, that's her niece. Or his niece, sorry. Really? Yeah, that's what I meant by uh, I couldn't say no I... when uh, they were going to replace you temporarily. <laughs> I see. That's, um... Oh, oh no. Maybe I should come back, like, soon. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't want to request that, but also I think <laughs> people are really missing you. <laughs> wow, they maybe I should have them say to my face that they missed me and then I'll go and check in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I got yeah. I got to deal with her at some point and I don't know. I might have to I don't know. I I I've I've not spoken to her, so I I I was meant to and then, you know, I face planted an ambulance, so I need to get back there and see her. Yeah, I would take the time to heal. Do you want any um any drinks, but No, I'm good. Thank you. Actually, I, I just so I've been since I've been recovering, I've been drinking a lot of like you know Gatorade, and uh, I discovered a uh, a lime cucumber. It's really good. And that is when I leave. Goodbye. <laughs> What's no, wrong I'm with it? I got no, I got like 24 of them in the fridge. You want one? You know what? I will. I'll I'll try it. I'll go get you one too. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. 
it's such a nice morning tonight or this morning i should say it is yeah yeah nice and I know clear. Late, yeah i know before i went on my training we were having a lot of night shifts so it's nice to see the morning sun once in a while yeah all right Oh, you didn't have to stand up. Oh, it's not good. I got I got to move every now and then, so I figured I'd come over here. Yeah, it's like uh, you ever have like a like a cucumber or a martini. I actually don't believe I have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it tastes mostly like cucumber and not so much lime, but it has that like Gatorade electrolyte taste to it. Mm -hmm. Not gonna lie, I was uh, I was mixing it with some uh, some vodka. It's very good. I'm not a big fan of vodka, though, is the problem. I, I'm, I'm very conflicted on this one. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a little bizarre, but, like, I, I just, I really like it. It's, <laughs> I hate it and I like it at the same time. Yeah, and, like, no one else I've, I've, like, had try it likes it so like i think i'm single-handedly keeping this particular flavor alive in the gatorade uh you know product line it's my phone Give me one moment hello hello ouch howdy uh i'm doing all right i'm actually um in town uh, i was about to head probably in me and uh, Glenn on right now are catching up. I I heard about him getting injured, so we've been kind of seeing each other and catching up. Sure. I'm, I'm sorry. What? You. You got arrested on shift. What? Arliss got arrested too. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll Yeah, we'll we'll come pick you up. All right. Is Harless uh home safely? Okay. Yeah, we'll be there as fast as possible. All right. See you soon. Um, apparently Dodd and Harless got arrested and yeah. he's quite literally in prison right now. What the hell happened? He, he said it's a long story. Why don't we head da down that way? They said they uh, were released. Um, Harless was released, I guess, a couple days ago and now he's released from prison. They put him in prison. A couple days ago? No one said anything. Uh, do our line officers know? I, I, I would hope I didn't so. Did I get a text about it? Because I we sure as hell didn't get an email about it. No, I didn't get any email about or sorry, text about it or email. Yeah, I didn't get anything either. Okay, why don't we head down there and see what the hell went on? Yeah. Uh, apparently BCSO arrested them. Oh god, what the hell happened? I I don't know. I I'm not gonna I hope it's nothing major because we might just be losing two firefighters right now. Yeah, a chief fan of Possible future lieutenant. Okay, that's that's actually okay. After you, I gotta lock the door. Yeah. I walked to your house, so I'm gonna. Oh, um, yeah. Do you want to drive here? Yeah, I can drive. I can drive. I, what the fuck did they do to get arrested? I don't know. This is that's not great. There seems to be a lack of communication. Oh, car versus garbage truck. Car versus garbage truck. So yeah, what um, what was your uh, what was your training for again? I, I I know he told me before he left, but I can't remember what it was. Um, I was getting a uh, record, just a regular fire recourse for one, and then uh, an extended um. 
extended safety training and leadership training. I just wanted to see if I could uh, improve myself on any point of my leadership here in the fire department. Not like a necessary course, I just wanted to get extra, extra things done. Uh, sure, yeah, you're, you're gunning for my spot. I see how it is. No, I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I, I saw the uh, I saw that leadership training come up uh, for the fire training center, and I was like, uh, I, I don't need I it. I would go, I but need it. oh no, is it up here? I think it is. Oh no! And we're committed. Do you think? Oh, and then there's a fucking chase right there. <laughs> no, he's spin he's spinning around. Oh no, he's not. You just keep the think, uh, shoulder clear. Do you think clear. we can pull through? We may have to follow him to get past, I don't know. I don't think he's gonna make it. Also... And we make it as the question. I bet if you took the right shoulder there. The right shoulder, you think? Yeah, no, see, there's see. a truck. I can see up there that there's a truck and a vehicle on the way. I mean, you could always put the lights on and back up up the highway. I'm not gonna complain about it. Here in about... There you go. Yep, you're good, you're good. No. I'm gonna go left or right here. Yeah. Oh, just in time, there goes ladder coming up behind us. Yeah. <laughs> You really would have gotten yeah, stuck. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Exactly. They're gonna, they're not gonna make it through there. Yeah. Yeah, if you take the next exit, you can loop around. Yeah. Alright, let's, let's figure this out. Yeah, probably gonna have to give your ID to the gate guard here. I, I think they'll probably release them outside. Oh yeah, but just Fine. to get past the gate guard. Oh yeah, yeah. Right here. Yeah. Howdy there, sir. Uh, we're just coming here to pick someone up. There you go. Picking up a, um... What's Todd's first name? I forgot. I, I, I don't know. Half the time I forget your first name. Jordan. We keep we're picking up Jordan Dodd. Jordan Dodd. Alright, thank you. I think he's over there to the left. Yeah, he's waving. To the left? Yeah. There's See, a I, few people. Yeah, over there. That car over there. What car? Over behind us? Behind us, yeah. He just, he just waved at us. Oh, this this vehicle turns like a fucking semi. You just, you just can't drive. Okay. Hey, Doc. Hey. What's going on? Not usual. Oh, I think we should be asking well, you I that, I wish I could actually. say the same. Uh, so, this is Matthews. You guys know Firefighter yeah, yeah. Matthews. He's going to be my legal counsel for all this, but just to explain to you guys what all is going on. So, essentially, Harless and I took that lieutenant ride along to try and get his feet wet, let him get some experience and everything. And um, we ended up having an issue where the... A uh, tanker was going out to the county to go get some hydrant checks done, and they struck a bore um, that was crossing the road. Uh, they relayed over the radio for county or for fire radio to respond to them, and they got nothing. They hollered three times for them, and at that point, they didn't really know what to do, so they hollered for command. I was focused more on the hydrant, and Harless took it, and, and he asked eyes. me what to do. I didn't quite copy what they said. I asked for him to repeat what was going on. And he said something about a bore and the tanker. Um, at that point, I thought somebody was possibly getting attacked by the bore. So I said, well, Tim went into their channel and uh, talked to them about what's going on, um, get them to send a game warden out to us. And he went into their radio, asked for the game warden, immediately got told to leave, came back to fire radio and told me about it. I kind of got a bit of attitude myself, and I went into the radio and uh, was a bit more firm with it, and 
requested that their highest ranking send somebody out to the deal with the incident. And I, I sat there and I listened to it. They told me to leave and I wanted, I didn't speak after that. I just listened to make sure that there was an officer going in route. Uh, after they, they copped an attitude back at me, I went back to fire radio. He finally responded and I told him to en route me their, their highest ranking to talk to me at their station. Um, uh, Sheriff DJ came up there and we started talking about, uh, the professionalism of the incident and the fact that the, the courtesy that we received just for asking somebody to show up and handle what could have, in my mind, have been a dangerous situation, even though it was just the boar getting struck by the vehicle, it's still their job to handle it. And it's still in my mind, what I was told a dangerous situation. So after asking them to respond, I felt kind of attacked by the fact that they wanted to get belligerent with me on the radio. So I had some choice words to say with him, and then we went about our day. Um, everything stayed mostly civil. And then after going back to the station, we did a couple of drills, had a good time. And then two um, officers with badges, they were in, uh, investigators, I believe. Um, Hodge and one other sergeant investigator, I can't remember his name. Uh, they showed up and asked us to come around the back of the station to deal with some stuff that had happened previously. I tried to go into Garland's office to talk and he kept persistent with me, stating that they didn't want to go into the office. They'd rather talk around back. I knew that something was suspicious at that point, so I didn't really ask too far into it. As we went around the back, we saw that there was multiple officers and a um, transport van back there. Uh, they told us that we were under arrest for tampering in the first degree um, due to entering their channel without permission to do so, without reason to do so. Um, we got screamed at, searched, cuffed. They took our property. They took our property and then read us our rights and took us to jail. Uh, this isn't a jail. This is fucking prison. Yeah. Were well, you given bail or anything like that? Uh, no. Uh, been here, what, what is it now, Matthews? Five days? Four days? Just about, um... This Can't. is... What this is, is they've charged him, and what this release is, is it's a, a notice to appear. A notice to appear for first-degree tampering of right. what? First-degree always implies malicious intent, for one. So, are we not allowed to contact... Are we not allowed to contact VCSO when there's a potential emergency? Is that what I'm I, hearing? I guess not. What they want us to do is they want us to call 911 and have 911 dispatch people. Well, I'm sorry if I can't get a hold of a dispatch and I need people there, I'm going to do what I have to do to get people there. If there's not a fire dispatcher, what makes us think that there's going to be a 911 dispatcher available? We shouldn't have to call 911 when we're active on duty. As but firefighters, I I didn't want to get disrespectful in the situation or speak out of place on it, get myself into more trouble with the situation. As unhappy as I am with it, I was compliant. I enacted my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. Just went about my day, and I've been here ever since. They still want to question me, and they're wanting to question me tomorrow. I'm going to have Matthews present for that. But I was. Wait, hold on. So they charged you without even questioning you? Well, they wanted to question me on the spot, and I wanted it. I wanted Matthews to be there as legal counsel first, but I wasn't. I wasn't comfortable with being questioned without a lawyer present. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, real, real quick, they want to question you tomorrow. I was told they didn't have anything else to question you for. That was what Hodge told me. Um, he left a message with the front desk here, saying that they wanted to question me on the incident. Okay. Uh. Well, first and foremost, I'm going to request that a different detective takes on this case. This is the second time now that Detective Hodge has been a part of a case and has caused uh, turmoil amongst the fire department members, doing well, it both so unprofessionally. We're, we're pushing some pretty heavy charges on him. I think so far okay. right now what we're looking at doing is four felonies on this situation, and mm. they've violated several uh, violated several problems. They and, violated an amendment. Um, yeah, my fourth amendment. Mind if I 
explain the yeah that's fine process. you know more about it than i do okay so <clears throat> this case has actually caused some pretty serious waves we have the office of the inspector general present as well as the federal bureau of investigation uh they are both on our side for the most part uh the current plan is if it goes to trial we have a very hefty defense on multiple uh, multiple levels ideally it will not go to trial either on the basis of the court system throwing it out or we are unable to find a prosecutor willing to prosecute this case um as soon as it as soon as that happens whether it's thrown out or we win the case their their records are expunged they will no longer have anything on the record of this event um it won't show up if they get looked up by law enforcement ever again once that happens we have the opportunity to counter charge in this case and what we're counter charging for is detective hodge did not secure a arrest warrant prior to enacting this arrest and in doing so violated Dodd and Harless's Fourth Amendment rights. Um, and as such, let me, let me look it up real quick. Do they need an arrest warrant to arrest, uh, uh, arrest him? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is that for any arrest, like, altogether? What about the people who are arrested on the spot? So it comes down to if the crime is witnessed to have happened, or if in this case, uh, to my understanding... Sheriff DJ told Detective Hodge to investigate. So it's no longer a, a patrol officer witnessing a crime happen. It's a detective being told to investigate a crime. So there's no longer oh. PC to make an immediate arrest. In order to do so, he'd have to gather his evidence, make up PC, secure an arrest warrant, then enact the arrest. Right. Um, and in failing to do so, he has violated their Fourth Amendment rights as they are the persons to be searched and or seized. Um <laughs> And in doing so, he's opened us up to countercharge with fourth degree assault of a special victim, uh, harassment in the second degree. Wait one second, I'm looking at the wrong list here. Are we able to get an extra charge on him? Because I want to also uh, look into the case of. Uh, I don't know what happened to our original case as well. We've been looked at uh, into for negligence, I guess, uh, regarding a case of um, Warner. And we haven't been updated on that case as well. And uh, well, Keenai told me as I was as we were actually getting arrested, she had sent me a text message. I read it just before I called you. She said that case has been closed. Okay, if that case has been closed, and at this point, I want to can we sue for potential uh, defamation at this point from Hodge as well? Because this is the second time now he's been extremely unprofessional, and at this point, I feel like it's targeted. We can, um, we can, if you'd like. It so this particular case is Jordan Dodd and Clayton Harless v. Status San Andreas, mm -hmm. meaning okay. that it would have to be on Dodd and Harless's behalf if they would like to sue. If you personally would like to sue, or should the department make the decision on an administrative level to uh, pursue damages, the department would have to open a lawsuit in civil court, and they would have to push for, uh, in this case, defamation through that course of action. Okay. Um, I've spoken with both Dodd and Harless. Uh, our plan of action is our four charges, all four of which are felony. Uh, so like I said, fourth degree assault, a special victim, harassment in the first degree, kidnapping in the first degree, and tampering in the first degree. Okay, um, and this is, uh, I'm sorry, is continue. this specifically against Hodge, Detective Hodge, or the BCSO altogether? It's this is against Hodge for right now, unless he throws DJ under the bus as receiving okay. a direct order to do so. Okay. Um, and then afterwards, the intention is that we will secure an EPO against Detective Hodge on behalf of both Dodd and Harless that will then escalate into a restraining order. Um, it is unlikely, with four felonies on his record, that Detective Hodge will remain a member of the Blaine County Sheriff's Office. Should he, by some miracle of God, remain a member of the Blaine County Sheriff's Office, there will be certain exemptions to the uh, EPO and restraining order due to the fact that should they have to interact while on duty as law enforcement. I'm sorry, there's a deputy that stopped somebody over there, I think. Um, are we... Dodd, did they stop somebody? Can you tell? I don't think uh, that's the yeah. reason why. Okay. I, was, I was hoping not. Um, 
there will be certain concessions that will have to be made if he is still a law enforcement officer. However, it's unlikely. Okay. Um. Wow, I'm so sorry that happened to you, God. Yeah, man, this is this is a lot. Were our firefighters notified at all that they were? Uh, no, no, no. They told us they wanted to speak to us in private. Brought us around the back of the station. And it kind of seemed like it was more to to keep firemen from uh, you know wielding up the axes and trying to fight the issue. Which I understand okay. trying to to keep minimal eyes off of it, but I wasn't given the chance to say that we were going 42. They were still under the impression that we were um, that we were still available. I hadn't talked much to others when I spoke with um, Snyder from my one phone call when I got here. He was still under the impression that we were missing. Okay, so that's another thing. Is is that another charge we can throw back at him? Is that they didn't notify our firefighters, therefore at that point uh, potentially putting their safety at risk? Yes, ma'am. That falls under the tampering in the first degree due to the fact okay. that enacting this arrest, it hindered our uh, safety and ability to perform as firefighters. I want the whole book thrown at this man at this point. He has been extremely unprofessional as a deputy. I don't even know how he has his badge. Well, that's Chief, the, uh, the department suing is up to you. You're the one that's got to make that decision. Yeah, I, I mean... Think my, I think we'll have to discuss that at a later time. I would like to get this resolved between you and Hodge, unless it becomes a bigger issue. And then um, potentially look into suing the BCSO at this point. What was... Why did they exactly... I'm still confused why they arrested him for asking for help over radio. We've done that for... Years. Well, what they were hung up on is the fact that uh, it wasn't a life-threatening situation. As far as what I was told, it was a life-threatening situation. But come to find out, what had actually happened is that the tanker connected with the boar, and the boar was dead. They needed a game warden to deal with the dead body. That was it. But you weren't given so that information? I wasn't provided that information at the time. And what I was provided with was that there was tanker and there was a boar. I had reasonable suspicion to believe that people were at risk. Boars have done wild shit, including like you you try and flee off a boar, you know, scare it, it's gonna charge and break something oh, if 100%. not if not take your arms off. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, my I'm sorry, but I, you see, I, I, I had the suspicions and I had the yeah. reasons of why I did it. But regardless of whether we feel like somebody could get hurt or somebody isn't going to get hurt. I feel like it's detrimental to the public to not be able to reach out for help in a situation like this from people who get paid to protect us. Well, here's my thing I, on that, too. Okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna state this. Uh, there's been one time where I almost got killed by a fucking boar ramming into me, and I flew off a fucking cliff. So, yeah, you know what? I'd rather face a fucking cougar than a boar. So, the, the fact that they, they're stating uh, them being part of the game warden uh, side of things and them not understanding how serious these animals can be is the, a whole different issue that they need to fix. Well, here's the, here's yeah, the sorry, thing too. On. Yeah, um, you know the fact that they did not know at first whether or not it was a life or death situation, and still copped an attitude back at you for being in that channel means that. So if it had been an emergency and had been life or death. Would they still have copped the same attitude with you for being in that channel? Like, th literally, the policy states that in an emergency, we can get in that channel. So if we do that in an emergency and they still cop an attitude with the person who gets on the radio, then what's the point? Yeah, he, uh, them, it sounds like this was our retaliation for you getting upset. Uh, and, you know, they, they've gotten upset at us on that scene. Olsen screamed into my face, but I still kept professional. And we talked it out later. I didn't go and retaliate and, and charge you, you know, and charge Olsen or whatever and took him to jail. They, their first cause of concern should be whether, okay, we have a firefighter calling for help for a potential life-threatening situation. Let's get out there, especially if we have the units. And the fact that they didn't is upsetting. And, and we have never once yelled at a law enforcement officer for coming in our channel to request help for something. Like, you know, even in a major situation, where we've got like a big structure fire and you know mass casualty whatever and if a law enforcement officer drops into our channel and is requesting something we'll very politely tell them sorry you know we're, we're busy right now or whatever like we have these units that'll come to you or the county will, will send a unit whatever but you know 
I, I can't even think of an instance where we've ever had an attitude with a law enforcement officer for coming to our channel. And if we had a similar policy that they do now, where we forbode other departments from getting on our channel to let uh, let us know, like, I don't know, if there's an officer shot and bleeding out down on Grove Street, and uh, we forbid them from coming in, they have to call 911 on their phone, you know, that's now a risk to that officer's health, because now instead of coming directly to us and, and, and allowing us to do our job to protect that officer and, and medically treat him, we are going to put a, a hurdle in the way that would prevent them from getting in touch with us so that we could help that officer? No, we would never do that. And I would I would hope that the same would not apply in the other direction. So I'm really curious as to why this policy even went into place in the first place. Well, and me personally, I think I'd rather have somebody come and tell us directly than set off that annoying pager. 100%. Or, I don't know, have someone call, call 911 as if we are not all in this together as you know, government agencies here to protect the people. Like, we're gonna put things in the way so that we cannot effectively communicate. Like, th this communication has gone backwards as a policy instead of being more effective. Like, we... If there's a problem with firefighters joining their channel and, and jamming up their frequency, then how about we have a better coordinated training between all of the departments instead of isolating departments? That is my big issue. And now this is what's happened as a result of it. And it's unfair, it's unjust, and it's unsafe. So far, the little bit of response I've heard, people have sent me mail um, while I've been here. And the firefighters that were there that night, or firefighters that were told about it, they're they're genuinely upset, and they have every right to be. But this is ridiculous. It sounds to me like, as as bad as I hate to say it, and excuse my French, dick measuring. That's all it really is. Is this is my channel? This is my team, and you're gonna stay out of it. Well, we shouldn't be acting like that. I we need to be working together. All these departments, we need to be working together because we're yeah. here for the people. We're not here, as you stated, to dick measure. We're yeah. here for the people, and it, we need to be having each other's backs in order to do our jobs even more efficiently. Uh, than yeah, this. me and Matthews were talking about it before you guys rolled up. I I'm not interested in pursuing for funds. I don't want to take. Hodge's money, I don't want to take the sheriff's money, I don't want to take BCSD's money. I want this policy gone. That's my main concern. I don't care if it gets modified to where we have full access or if they get rid of it entirely, but it's unsafe. And it's not, it, it makes no sense. Okay, I want two things. I want whatever policy this is, I, I want it revised, but I also want Hodge's badge at this point. That's just because this has been a consistent problem with this specific deputy. Yeah, no I mean, other deputies had problems. Like, even Olsen yelled at me, and, you know, he was unprofessional, but we handled it after. Hodge just seems like he's an incompetent deputy at this point. Incompetent detective. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, the Olsen thing, like, you know what? We all get heated, and we all have a stressful job, and we have really bad days some days, and we sometimes lash out. That's how that, that works. But from what I've heard of this investigator, Hodges, not only has he upset the widow of a recently dead man by questioning yelling and grilling her uh in public while you know she's still mourning fresh from you know her <laughs> from her spouse's you know demise that's uncalled for and and just brutal and and just so harsh and you know everything he did in that investigation and now this one this is this is just incompetence on a whole new level. Hi. Yeah. So, what? What? Are, what about Harless? He's already been released. He's all right. That's what they told me while I was in there. The the guard that I was talking with said that he'd already been gone. His okay. cell was empty, so I don't know where what's up with him. Okay. Um. He might have actually been taken to Hillside. That's possible. He did request counseling for the situations. So, at this point, what are our next 
steps because something needs to be done and something needs to be done fast. I'm I'm going to avoid all contact with him at this point. I mean, okay. I feel comfortable going back to work if you guys will have me, but I I don't want to have any contact with Hodge or DJ individually. I'm happy to work with BCSD and you know be a part of anything that they're going there that's happening, but. I don't want any direct contact with them until all of this is done and over with and a decision has been made on it. I don't feel comfortable around them. Yeah, I mean, so, you're you're good to, to come back to work. I have no problem with that. So if Campbell doesn't... Um, uh, I I don't... Um, my question is, what are your current... So your current charges is a felony on your head? But it's not... The inspector active? general dropped it to a misdemeanor. It misdemeanor. was a felony okay. charge when okay. I got taken in for investigative hold. Okay, but they're gonna. Do we know for sure if BCSO is gonna fight to keep this charge on your head? Or at this point, I think it's all up in the air, right, Matthews? It is up to the court whether they want to prosecute. So, right now, the charge has been submitted for prosecution. It's up to the prosecutor's office on if they can even find a prosecutor to pursue it. If they can't, it'll be dropped. Um, I've also petitioned the courts to have the case thrown out. On the basis that the initial arrest was unlawful, voiding the entire pursuing series of events. Um, That's the current step. When I hear back, I'll make sure that it's known what happens. Um, If it goes to trial, it goes to trial. But at this point, we're we're causing such a fuss and we're giving them such... we're, We're becoming such a stick in the mud that there's a chance that they might elect just to no longer pursue charges. Now, if, okay. if that happens, or we don't go through with the charges, they can't find a prosecutor, or whatever it be, can we still counter sue, or does that drop everything? Absolutely. With the current... So currently, we have a law enforcement agency investigating Detective Hodge. We are the ones that have produced the charges for them. They're the ones that will enact the arrest, and it will become a separate court case. Okay. Okay. The, yeah, I guess the further, the, the more long-term issue is this re- relationship between BCSO and the fire department seems to be unstable. I mean, we need to find a way to stabilize it. And, and I don't want it to be that way. I, w- I want us to have a working relationship with every department, including them. And it just it's just bizarre to me that this policy would even go into place without even consulting us to say like, hey, we've been having these issues with... Um, people coming into our channel how can we better work together to make uh, to create more effective communication none of that has happened and instead this wall gets put up between us and then when someone crosses it because they believe there is a life or death situation that person gets arrested for it that's like so a person calls for help and they get arrested for it that's that's basically what happened here and i i find that so unacceptable and just uh, a complete degradation of our relationship between the departments, and for no reason. Correct. Um, my two cents to begin with is I know that there are a lot of firefighters that are upset by what happened. I myself have had to tell several of them to go home because they were very close to getting themselves in trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a good point to make to begin with is that there will be no um, retaliatory actions against the sheriff's office. Because not not only is that wrong morally, it is harmful to the court case that we are currently trying to pursue. Well, I, w- I would hope that most of our firefighters, or all of them, understand that they shouldn't be breaking the law. Absolutely. Well, assumptions can be made all done all day about it, but there's something there needs to be something that's physical that they can look at and be like, they've been told not to do this. Correct. Okay. We'll um, probably post a department wide email, hopefully, you know, stating the fact that this is being handled legally and no one should be, you know, taking any further actions. Yeah. I just, I, I'm so happy to be out of this place. And I just want to get back to work, honestly. It's it's completely different to go from a good time hanging out with friends every single day at work 
being able to enjoy everything and then it all taken away from you it brings a new perspective absolutely I just I don't know I want it to be over with as quick as we can Uh, do we have any like body cameras that will be able to be allowed to view or the other side will be allowed to view to to get the full side of this story I I have gotten a hold of footage from body cameras, our our personal CCTV out of the back of the station, as what well about as Hodges, um, Hodges as well. Is he's the one that arrested them? Correct. It's my understanding that at the time Hodges in plain clothes. I'm not sure he had a body cam on, but there were other deputies present that did. Okay. And I went and met with him later on, and I have uh, footage from his phone. Yeah, if that's the case, if we can get footage from behind the station, audio recording, um, you'll you'll hear me get told to walk to the back of the paddy wagon. I start to walk while saying that I'm going to enact my Fifth Amendment right, and he screams at me and cusses at me to stay still. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, because I want to so just... It's, yeah. it's, it's belligerent, and it, it got me heated, but I kept my cool. And you know what's laughable about it? He's acting that way. Hodges acting that way for somebody transmitting over a radio. Like, I'm sorry, that's right. actually childish. Like, like Dodd, had you, like, I don't know, uh, struck a person at a scene with your vehicle and then left. You know what? I, I'd say maybe uh, a deputy, as unprofessional as, as unprofessional as it would be, coming up to you and yelling at you for that situation. You know what? I can see someone losing their cool for that. Yeah, but for transmitting over a radio, like, is this preschool? Like, oh man, I'm a hardened criminal. Yeah, like I don't know, man. Like I, I don't know if I can work with you anymore. I'm, I'm afraid of you. <laughs> you were very for a very short period of time. You were on the same level that I, I went to prison. I was technically a felon. Correct. Yeah. You, you were on the same level of offense as I was when I went. I, I appreciate that you guys see it my way, but. For transparency's sake, I'll state that if there's any, I don't want to say punishment, but anything you guys need to talk about with the situation, if I need to go to any kind of retraining or anything like that, I'm happy to do so, and I understand it. It's I, I don't feel like I did anything wrong in the situation, but I understand that technicalities are technicalities, and I'm happy to comply with whatever it is you guys need me to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, we just gotta we'll follow, you know, legal counsel's uh, direction, and we'll just you know go from there. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll do this legally. Um, I just hope it we can uh, rebuild whatever relationship has been kind of cracked between them, because we definitely don't. I I don't want to have a broken relationship, but if we have to start relying on a different department to get help we you know and i don't want to do that i really don't okay uh excuse me one moment yep well and if the situation arose i'm sure we could talk to the state department about helping us out in these situations no sir uh we've we've pretty well planned for all contingencies um up to and including the fact that we've we've admitted that it does ha- it has happened however the happening of the incident does not justify the reaction um which then pulls me into my next topic that uh, I was just on the phone with uh, the one and only Detective Hodge. He he sounds like he's in a bad way. Um, hmm. He's up at their substation in the city and he's wanting to speak to me uh, regarding the events. So, Really? I will see. We will see. Are you his lawyer or are you able to talk to him? I, I am able to talk to him uh, on the basis of him being the technically the prosecution in this case and myself being the legal representation of the uh, defense okay so yeah. I'm Dodd this is up to you entirely based on the way that he sound there's a chance that somebody might have levied some hefty actions against him and given him an ultimatum of either the charges get dropped and this gets gone or he gets gone do you want to still leverage charges against him if they say they're going to drop the charges I mean, as as much headache as he's caused for not only me and Harlos, but also for the department, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I would. I want to keep pushing it. Okay. I um, mean, he kept pushing it on me. He got belligerent with me on the situation. Absolutely. It's where I if, see it, it's it's fair and just in that situation. If he is being threatened to be removed from the sheriff's office, and there's they say that this is just to clean this up, and he's being removed or otherwise receiving punishment on it due to this, does that change your? Your it doesn't really fix the situation that was at hand. He was ordered by a superior officer to do this. Of course. I, and I, I don't disagree. And if yeah. you still want to pursue it, we can still pursue it. I do. It still doesn't fix the situation of but my main problem with it, which is the, the policy entirely. Right. And that, I feel this, the policy might be the subject of discussion for your the if, if the meeting. policy goes away and we're permitted access because of the safety of not only us and our department, but the civilians of San Andreas as well, I will drop the charges. Okay. I just, I got to be prepared on what I can tell him when I go meet with him. So with that, I... It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can okay. feel free to tell him that directly, but that is the only way that I will drop the charges if, okay. if that policy is gone. We'll and just uh, like to go through. Continue. Sorry. Sorry. And, and if you want to add to that, when you speak to him, that um, SAFR is fully willing and able to sit down with them and develop a mutual policy that works for both parties that doesn't get our firefighters arrested for simply talking. Um, we're willing to do additional trainings for our department in order to, if somebody needs to drop into their channel in order to communicate with them directly, we will have policies and training in place so that they know how to transmit over that frequency. And that's really how it should have been in the first place. But we are willing to be the ones to first open that door if they will not. Absolutely. I will, uh, I will be sure to bring that up. Um, and Dodd, do you still want to go through with the EPO regardless? Uh, yes. Okay. Answer that question for me. He, he did over the phone. He still tried to justify this as, I have a job to do. <laughs> yeah. That so. is, a, that is one that I hate hearing from any law enforcement officer. Oh, ab absolutely. It, and it means that they've lost, um, to, in my eyes, it it means that they don't have any further excuses to give about their actions. It's like how many how many There's times no conscious involved in it? Yeah, it's like how many times have have we said on a medical scene, well, we have a job to do, and they're like, nope, you have to get your people out of here or move this or that, whatever. It's like, okay, we have a job to do, but you know, fuck us, I guess. Absolutely. And I, I, I feel that I might be able to leverage the fact that we have four felonies against him. In this case, it's it's not against and it should not harm the court case to inform the uh, the other party of potential charges they're facing. So we might be able to leverage that a bit in our uh, to our benefit. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is definitely something I didn't want to come back to from my time away. Absolutely. I will say that your uh, your your temporary replacements. She's a character. Is she? I've been here. <laughs> Morgan texted me while I was in the middle of one of my tests, stating uh, that she hated her. Yeah, she's. There have uh, uh, there have been some some situations. Right. Uh, I think firefighter Ripley poured water on her seat in her in her vehicle. Really? Uh, on purpose? Was, yeah. <laughs> um, there was some kind of prank, I think, with laxative in her coffee or something like that. Oh my I god! I cannot. I can't uh, okay, like that just not, I nope, stop, that's, stop talking. Stop there was, talking. Yeah. Um, someone <laughs> needs to talk to her about that. I'm going to tell you that now. Someone well, doesn't that, talk about the that. the laxative thing wasn't Ripley, but it wasn't anyone. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Well, not, especially not in front of the legal counsel. Hot. Um, yeah, I I've heard some things about uh about Baldwin as well and I need I need I need people to send me some reports about her be before I confront her because I'm going to because I I was going to talk to her about some of the rumors that I'd heard but then I you know got face planted into the side of an ambulance and couldn't work for a couple weeks 
Well, I don't know how far lead of training extends, but like every every single time I, I see her on an incident, she's yelling at somebody and then standing there doing nothing, which <laughs> it kind of cracks me up in a way, <laughs> but it's, it's a little unprofessional. Oh, she's filling Campbell's shoes perfectly then. Ah, uh, yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's, that's Do you want to go back into that wheelchair? <laughs> I'm just Ooh. kidding. Um. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's uh, do that thing where we all put our hands in and go woo like a sports team, and we'll break from here. Yeah. Uh, no. Hey, who's going with actually. who though? Because it looks like you two are gonna actually. You're not coming with us, dog. Like mm, he was waiting on Harless. He was waiting on Harless, but I guess he's already out. I probably shouldn't take the defendant to go and speak with the man that arrested him. Yeah, well, I wasn't sure if uh, he was requesting Dodd, so... No. It was like he's requesting you alone. Yeah, we'll awesome. see how well that goes. Is this an impaler? Okay. Uh, no, it's actually it a, a, um... Here we go. Oh, it's the Vamos. Okay. It, it's I, the Vamos. Yeah, the front end looks the same as my, uh, my impaler, so I wasn't sure. Oh, very nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I found the, found the Vamos in a field, and I have a, uh... Oh, what's it called? Um, <laughs> hustler. That's what it's just seen hustler. the rest of rattle trap he came in. Oh, nice. Yesterday. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, my impaler was a barn find, so. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay. Nice. All right. We'll keep it short. Don't worry. Oh, Don't worry. Oh. We'll stop talking. Uh oh. Somebody coming to jail now? Oh, boy. Howdy there. Woods? What is that on the side of your vehicle? That's interesting. I could her ticket. Do you have new uh, liveries? Uh, yes. I see. What's up, Woods? How you doing, buddy? Yo, well, how about yourself? I'm surviving, man. Nice. What are you all up we're, to? We're, <laughs> we're hanging in there. Better now, nice. but yeah. we're all right. I was, off, I was driving down the highway, and I was... Vehicle spark down here, and I was like, "Huh, oh, wonder what kind of party is going over there." So I showed up. <laughs> oh, all right, y'all take care. All right, you too. Thank, thank you. Well, yeah. you know, it's a drug deal. Earlier, uh, Dodd, when they led you back to through the station under false pretenses, that was entrapment. So, yep. It's another piece of hay on the stack that's eventually break the camera's back. Uh, explain the entrapment part to me. So, what Deputy, uh, sorry, Detective Hodge and his partner did was they led them uh, into the station and out the back under the pretense that they were going to go and have a conversation. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Fine. In doing so, ooh, they led them into essentially an ambush under false pretenses. Right, wow. instead of just saying, like, hey, you know, come with us, we need to, like, you're under arrest, basically. Just right off the bat. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's definitely entrapment. So, it's just, it's another thing on the back of the camel. Yeah, and, and it, it's just it's just crazy to me that they needed that many deputies to, to go arrest one firefighter. Like, like Dodd, like, you're, like, I, you're gonna run. I counted at least seven. Yeah. I've been saying a dozen. I guess they all wanted to spectate it. Well, I also didn't look around every which way. No, that's fine. I, uh, I'd, there have been a couple instances throughout this process that have been, excuse me, um, that have been kind of, uh, what is it? Intimidation. That's what it is. The seven deputies out back to arrest two firefighters while they're on duty. Uh, when myself and Davis came into the fire station to try and figure out where he was at, we got four or five deputies in the lobby with us blocking her exits. When I went to talk to Detective Hodge, I had two detective sergeants blocking the exits. Little things like that. So, it's, uh, pretty intimidating. Oh yeah, especially for someone so, who's formerly been to prison. So, what I'm getting from this is that the, the Sheriff's Department also didn't put any trust in our department to, you know... They expected that, retaliatory action. Ex the fact that they expect the retaliation is uh, concerning. Um, like, I don't know if our firefighters would have retaliated. I doubt it. I doubt it. I don't think they would have. No, and these actions can also be seen as a 
non-verbal admittance of guilt. They knew what they were doing was unlawful and immoral, and in doing so, they felt the need to have these resources available to secure their immoral actions. Fair enough. I'm going to trust that she'll help with the proceedings as far as everything goes. But yeah. I appreciate you for helping out as much as you have already. Yeah, for sure. No worries. Yeah, thank you. Is, Absolutely. So is there not going to be a conflict of it, you know, interest issue with you being, you know, his lawyer? No, ma'am. Uh, due to my not being directly involved in the case, I'm not witness um, or accomplice to it. There should mm-hmm. not be any uh, conflict of interest. Okay. Beautiful. Well, then thank you for helping him. Yeah, for sure. All right, why don't we get you out of this fucking hellhole? Thank you. A burger God. or something. Go get a beer, a soda for now. Go get a beer later. <laughs> Tell you what, I owe you a beer. Yeah. I think we owe you a fucking it. twelve pack. Is what we owe you. Yeah. Win this okay. case for us, and I'll get you a twelve pack. <laughs> <laughs> is that bribery, Chief Lenon? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> for free, it's fine. <laughs> All right, where are we going? Yeah, we're going for gas first. Is what we're going? <laughs> Which gas station are we going to? Not, not flywheels, please. Okay, well we're not going to the Sandy Shores one either, so I guess we're going to Polito or something. No, we can't go all the way down. Uh, where, where do you live, Doug? I live out in the city, number one Greenwich Parkway. Uh, I can we're find not going to the city. We'll have to, we'll go. You can turn Shores. a right out of here and go across the freeway. There's one that's at the Dynamite. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, we can go to the Dino one. Oh wait, wait, no, go go into Harmony. There's one in Harmony. Make left. Uh, which one, Dynamite or uh, Harmony? Uh, uh, yeah, if you make a left into Harmony, there's that one by that. Know, but- yeah, but which which one do you want to go to? It's my it's truck. On me. Okay, <laughs> I'm driving it. I know it is my truck. Just go to the left. I'm gonna put fucking diesel in your truck. Wow. Choke it out. I'm gonna choke it out. Yeah, I know everybody else. Uh, it, 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 don't threaten my truck with a good time. Um, pour some <laughs> sugar in it. Pour some sugar in it. You know, I'm just I'm upset that this is happening. I know. It's ridiculous. Thought you and me both. You know, and like, the, and this is like the first time this has happened with this policy. It's like professional courtesy would dictate, like, come in and be like, "Hey, man, like, we could jam you up pretty good with this, but we're not gonna, you know, here's what you not do in the future." That, that's all I had to be, you know. Yeah, and that's all I expected it to be. I guess I had other plan. If if a deputy went and did a, a trichonometry on a on a on a patient before we got there. You know, I mean, that's that's a little different because now you're risking someone's life. But like, we would be like, "Hey, man, in the future, don't fucking do that." You know, <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, why don't you mark the GPS there, Dot, with your uh, address too? I, I don't even have my, G- I don't even have my GPS open. So what happened with you, Chief? So long story short, I was getting gas with Bailey up at uh, the flywheels, and uh, whilst we what were there, the fuck. Oh shit. A whole lot, whole ass rock collapse. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Classic. What the fuck? Anyway, um, how's that cool going currently? I'll probably be back to work tomorrow. I'm gonna take today's the, rest. Uh, oh, 100%. Yeah. Truck, uh, we are currently getting the hatch open and trying to get the PT out. Luckily, there's no. But I'm glad that the two of you guys are doing all right. Just got out. Oh my god, yeah. there's, there's a second trash truck accident. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, so Don, on the way to you, on the highway, there was a trash truck accident on the, the bridge, like the, the ramp going towards uh, the sandy exit. Um, and then now there's another one <laughs> with entrapment. It wasn't those two Russian idiots, is it? You know, we were speculating that the earlier one might have been one of them. All right, I appreciate it, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you, man. She'll be in touch. She'll be around with you guys as soon as I can. Sounds thank good. you. Thank you. Oh boy. All right, back to your house then. Yeah. I'm gonna turn around though, so I'm gonna make that turn backwards. Yeah. Very well. Yeah. Evan yeah. one skids down. Central deactivating Evan one, returning one. Oh, it's good to see you again. People have been missing me. It's been 
It's been nice getting out of state, but just come back as well. Oops. Wait, where's the turn? Oh, up here. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it'll be good to get, get have you back and, huh, I guess, get rid of Baldwin. Yeah, have you met her, actually? I... Uh, only uh, over the phone when it was, you know, they, they had her, uh, you know, when she's going to be coming in. Like, first I got a call from the commissioner, and then from her, but it was a very brief conversation. And then I was going to go uh, on shift with her and partner up with her on a, on a apparatus to which I was going to then talk to her about some things. But she, uh, but then my, you know, incident happened, so. Can we just park it like this? Yeah, that's fine. It ain't going to fit in that thing. Oh, it does. Don't worry. Oh, really? Yeah, I put it in there before. It's snowing. Interesting. Yeah. Show me the one leaving for Bob's room. Go behind you, probably. All right. But yeah, I'm gonna go uh, take a nap, maybe. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna walk back to my place then. But it was nice seeing you. I'm glad you're better and on your feet. <laughs> yeah, you too. I mean, uh, that, uh, that made no sense. Good to see you. That's what I meant to say. All right. I'll see you on Tuesday or any time before then too, if you want to. Come on by as well. Just All right. Yeah. Sounds All good. Right. Get yeah. all safe. Yep.